Hello everyone, uh, this is Dan the Nature Man from Mount Olive Conference and Retreat Center. Uh, over the years, uh, different people have asked me what kind of animals live at the Retreat Center. Well, beside all of the birds that are here, including uh, the wild turkey, which I'll touch on a little bit, uh, the wild turkey uh, sometimes gets itself into amusing situations. Uh, We've had it uh, get on top of our second story bird feeder here at the retreat center. I've also seen them up in uh, crab apple trees trying to reach the crab apples and they seem sort of uh, you know, out of place. These big birds in this smaller uh, 20 foot crab apple tree. But uh, even though the turkeys are on the ground a lot of the time, uh, they do roost in trees at night, which some people may not realize. But beyond the, the birds, uh, there are other animals at the retreat center, and probably the most common ones are the gray and red squirrels, which are often at the base of our feeders. The gray squirrels will bury their acorns here and there to many different places. And sometimes if there's another squirrel in the area, they'll pretend it's digging a little hole and look up to see if it's looking and pretend to put an acorn in there, but it really didn't. So I to try to fool the other squirrel. Now the red squirrels, they have a, a different method. Rather than spreading it out all over the place, they have a all in one, strategy. So they have these catches of uh, nuts. They'll store them maybe underground or in a hollow in the tree and they'll gather everything uh, all at once and then they'll guard them uh, from other squirrels. And then uh, we have another uh, interesting resident mammal and that is the, the woodchuck or the groundhog or some people call them whistle pigs. And the groundhog is, is sort of the inspiration for an old uh, tongue twister. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Woodchuck would chuck all the wood it could if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Now try saying that five times in a row and uh, see if you can get it right. Well, the woodchuck has uh, some interesting uh, features. It has uh, these four incisor teeth so it's chewing a lot, and it, she likes to chew on our plants uh, here as well. But they grow a sixteenth of an inch each week. So you know they're uh, always chewing on things, and they can uh, dig burrows uh, up to 24 feet long. Well, while they're hibernating in the winter, their body temperature goes down to as low as 35 degrees. And then their heartbeat is only like four to 10 beats per minute. And it only takes one breath about every six minutes. So this is an amazing adaptation uh, to get through the winter. It loses about half of its uh, body weight. Some other animals that go into sort of a modified form of hibernation, like the pocket gophers, the, the chipmunks, uh, the skunks, and the raccoons. And depending on which one you're talking about, some go into a longer uh, period of dormancy at the retreat center than others. Some other animals we have here are the common uh, cottontail rabbits. So the rabbits, uh, are, make nests a lot of time in our flower beds and the young are actually hopping out of the nest within two weeks. So these little baby bunnies, only this big or so, are hopping around basically on their own after only two weeks of age. So in the fields, uh, in the woods, we also have uh, deer mice, we have metal voles, that's with a V, and there's actually jumping mice that jump like a kangaroo. 
and they can take these uh, long leaps through the grass. Uh, we also have uh, moles with an M, a sort of burrow underneath uh, the surface. So lots of times they'll be in our lawn areas and uh, we sort of uh, are not happy that they're raising them up, but uh, they are actually looking for insects underneath there. They eat some earthworms, but they also are eating those larvae of the Japanese beetles, which are plaguing our flowers. So the, the larvae of the Japanese beetles are in their turf lawns, and uh, lots of times the moles are going after them. Then uh, if you take a trip down to the marsh area, we also have uh, uh, muskrats down there. So the muskrats make these little lodges that are often uh, a nice nesting platform for Canadian geese. And then we have the beavers as well, their bigger cousin, down at the marsh and the lake, and they make these huge lodge that they uh, stay in uh, during year round. And uh, they go up on land and try to cut down trees. Now, sometimes the beavers have bigger eyes than their stomach, and they try to chew off more than they can handle. And sometimes you'll see trees where they've chewed all the way around, and then they gave up. There's also uh, mink down at the, the marsh area uh, that are looking for meals. They maybe will go after some young uh, muskrats as well at, at times. And then we have an occasional red fox, uh, gray fox, and then we have the coyotes coming along. And uh, sometimes on a, during the summer and into the fall, you can uh, go outside here at the retreat center and hear them yipping in the distance and howling as well. Uh, one year we had a deer that uh, uh, showed up on the property that was dead and I put a game camera there and we had uh, crows coming to a red-tailed hawk, a black cat, and raccoons and then there was also a coyote that was coming and feasting on this deer carcass. So we do have uh, plenty of deer around here as well and they tend to like our Flower beds, uh, it seems like each year they have uh, something new that they like to try uh, on the menu. So this year it was daylilies. Now another interesting animal that we have here is the opossum. And they have uh, up to 14 young that ride on their back. So they're hitchhiking uh, while they're growing up. Now, one interesting thing about opossums, I never see them during the summertime. So I don't know if they're quite secretive during that time or what. I always see them in the winter, but uh, not so much at all in the summertime. And then there's another mammal that uh, people have asked me about. Have you ever seen a bear? Well, uh, I've only had one uh, reported case of a black bear, and that was actually on the other side of Chubb Lake. The neighbors reported it. There, there was uh, the dogs were barking, and the bird feeders had gotten knocked over, and it seemed like a black bear was sort of passing through the, the area and, and then went on. So the retreat center is a home for uh, more than 25 species of mammals and uh, they all have a, a part to play in the, the web of life here at the retreat center. So why don't you take a count in your neighborhood to see how many mammals you can find and you may be surprised at what a animal neighbors you may have in your midst.